Hey guys, it's currently present day, and mm -hmm. the time right now is uh, present time. Yeah. And we just watched two more episodes of Lane, in episodes three and four. And just to do the disclaimer, we're probably we're just gonna go straight into spoilers. Yeah. 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 Man, this is like if Ready Player One were fucked up. <laughs> Which is going to be my first recommendation after these two episodes. Oh, is that... If you weird? want to see a total mainstream trash version of especially the fourth episode, the video game. That's, that's pretty funny. You watch Ready Player One. I personally really dug it, but I think I turned my brain off for... I don't know. Just nothing bothered me about that film. I thought of something else, too. It's not a film. You made Nikki. Oh my, okay. From what I know of Yume Nikki, yeah. that and totally fits. Which is really interesting, because I think Yume Nikki came out in 2004, mm. which is six years after this was made. So, Are you sure this is 1998? Uh, 1998 or 7, one of those. Um, pretty sure that's the year. Um, well, heck, it's even in the title, we don't know immediately. Um, oh right, we could just check on the yeah, file. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah um, in our previous video for 1 and 2. Um, but yeah, I would not be 98. 98, yeah. Um, first, first episode, episode. July 6th. Um, huh. I would not be surprised if you may Nikki took direct influence from this because there's a lot of similarities in the aesthetic and the visual style, even like the protagonist kind of looks like Lane and oh, the music whoa. and the music in you may Nikki is also very similar to the soundtrack. Really? Like, in general? Design. In general, yeah. Is there a lot yeah. of rock stuff, too? Because that's no what rock. really popped the, out. It's not the rock stuff. It's the more atmospheric, droning music. Okay. But yeah, there, there could be some very heavy influence there. And also, there's maybe some influence with the themes. Because Yume Nikki is a lot about dreams. Mm -hmm. And this isn't really about dreams, but it maybe, like, plays in that territory it definitely of, does. like the unreal versus the real mm -hmm. and this is in a technological context where the other one is more in a psychological context yeah but this is blurring the psychological with the technological oh absolutely when you have yeah. an episode called psyche and the followed by an yeah. episode called religion there's a lot going yeah. on there i actually also have a non movie recommendation mm -hmm. it's an album i just listened to for the first time in a while today okay computer by radiohead oh, interesting okay. yeah the first thing, maybe it's because the album's just so fresh because I just listened to it today, but the theme song, the the opening title actually reminded me of the style of music in OK Computer, particularly the beginning of Paranoid Android. And just because uh, OK, OK Computer is about isolation, and that came out in 1997. It's about isolation in a world where technology, where people are increasing becoming increasingly reliant on technology and i feel like some of the themes really really align hmm. and just i don't you know i don't think i'm i have synesthesia but lane would be a good representation of what i think an okay computer visual piece would hmm. look like That's with okay. all the flashing <laughs> with all the yeah the, the co high contrast and the bright screens and i totally see it i don't know if kid a the more electronic Radiohead album would be a better comparison because I don't know that album uh, well enough. But I guess check out Kid A as well. And another recommendation that I think you Ooh, thought of. I have another one um, too. Yeah, Her. Oh yeah, that's yeah, what we, we we talked about this off camera like yeah, a couple we of days ago. Oh wait, of course. Because we were talking. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about modern films that um, do it like like talk about or portray technology in this way mm -hmm. successfully and we couldn't think of anything but obviously her yeah it's a no brainer is, is yeah. an example yeah it's just it's because a lot of sci-fi really like to go for the dystopian mm -hmm. because it's easier to do it in a society that vaguely resembles well this is dystopian but yeah. it's it's more connected to reality like yeah. starting with like this is present day present time mm -hmm. like it, it's connecting it to I don't know. It's a different type of dystopian. Yeah. That that's that's less about, you know, setting it in the future, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, I have one more recommendation. This one's a little uh, a little far fetched. It's just I don't know what the conclusion of the show is. I have no way of predicting it. But based on the way it kind of builds a puzzle for the audience to solve 
and the way certain things... It seems like it's playing stuff with time because certain characters know stuff about, about Lane that Lane isn't even aware of yet. So I'm just going to like throw out a guess that like some at some point soon she's going to enter the Wired and then maybe the Wired runs on a different time. I get that impression too. Yeah, and it seems like certain things that are in Lane's future will be, will occur in the past in real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really cool. But, um, I'll keep it very vague, but go see Arrival. Oh, I, we should watch that. Yes. Yeah. Cause I have not seen That's this. the reason I can't, we can't go yeah. deep into it because and saying anything else will be a spoiler, okay. especially for Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really need to see it. Yeah. yeah, like, I've been putting off seeing it because I heard it has an amazing electronic soundtrack. And I've been wanting to And this be... speaker, yeah. we, will, we will both die in good. a good way. In a good way? We okay, will good. both die good, good, a good. great death. Good, okay. Yes. I, ugh, I, if I had lots of money, I would get better speakers, but these no, are No, the, the fact that these are... But... So Mark's speakers are have more bass than the average speaker, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Which actually makes us better okay, if we watch cool. Arrival. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see him. There are things, yeah, Mark wanted to watch another episode after these two, but I had too much to say. <laughs> but now I try to put it into words and I can't do it. But, um, seems like the dad knows stuff. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but, like, well, the dad knows about more. technology in general, because he's in this world. Right. And he knows this world pretty well. Right, I really did not expect for them to go into the video game aspect of it. Because games were not nearly as immersive back in 1997. Well, they were a thing. They were a thing. They were a thing and they were a market. I think yeah. maybe the first Counter-Strike game came out, which kind of resembles like, the gun thing. Yeah, like, that was very reminiscent of, like, Doom or... Doom. Um, well, that's oh, more wait. console, like, GoldenEye, those first well, person... Well, Doom started on the PC. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Doom started on your computer. Uh, GoldenEye is Nintendo 64. Yes. Um, I forget when the Nintendo 64 came out, but, um, yeah, Doom was very specifically a, a, uh, computer game. Wait, the first Half-Life came out, too. Oh, yes, yeah. that was 95. Okay. Yeah, so first-person yeah. shooters did exist, and the visual style, you know, I almost wish they did more of that window screensaver first-person thing, because that was the stuff <laughs> that unnerved me the most. I was mm. visibly, like, I can't handle this. Yeah, he was like, yeah, oh. Because it reminded me of, like... <laughs> Modern games that purposefully are designed, like modern horror games that are purposefully designed to look bad, mm -hmm. like especially the SCP games, mm. SCP projects, like that directly reminded me of that, which has one of the most terrifying uh, creepy little doll things that you can't blink. There's actually a blink meter in that game, and if you blink, it's like a Weeping Angel in Doctor Who, but mm. like you play it as a game. Interesting. Yeah, and I think it's scarier than Weeping Angel, but. Yeah, the video game aspect is very, very cool. And I want to see how far the show goes. Because in four episodes, it's it's so dense, but it's also so sparse. Mm -hmm. And I think it does a good job. And I remember you saying how you had trouble finishing it last time. And I think there are many reasons. I can totally see why. Mm -hmm. Because... It's a lot. I feel yeah. like... But, but, but that's the thing. It's a lot to process. It is simultaneously... It simultaneously has momentum... While not having any momentum at all, the <laughs> yeah, show, uh -huh. like you're curious enough. Yeah, like it, it, a lot of the information is transferred to you where you really have to interpret what's going on. Yeah, and yeah, it's placing a lot of responsibility on you as a viewer to really figure out the how everything is fitting together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're into that type of stuff, if you're into a show not feeding you the answers and not dealing a lot of times the exposition is just dealt by two lines exchanged by two characters and you immediately know something mm -hmm. a little more yeah like i was surprised um because we did talk about last time the friends the other high school students and and i said how the fact that they were normal made them weird but because in the third episode they really really uh flushed them out more now they really do seem like just the normal average high schoolers Although even they are like, yo, we saw someone get shot. Why are we not? That's an interesting yeah. thing. <laughs> is that how? See now there, it, there's a self-aware element that I've mm -hmm. never really thought about. I mean, 
to an extent, I'm sure the show is aware that we're watching screens through screens. Oh, well. And I think it's going to go even deeper as the episodes go on. But by introducing something so meta where the characters literally question <laughs> what is it they're in, it makes you wonder, like, is the entire show aware that it's a show? Oh, well, I'm not sure if it was really going for the meta concept in I that way. I think it was. But, like... I mean, it might have been poking at it, but I think the point they were trying to communicate was, wait, why did we have this reaction to something that kind of felt like it was in a movie? Okay. Yeah. Like, making the parallel with the... So it's more wi- about... The wired in this universe. And not, right. not really so much that we're watching it. Oh, I don't know. okay. Yeah. So it's more really about the psychology of the characters. The and psychology... The, you the... actually... I thought it was a total fourth wall break. I totally... But yours make more sense. Yeah, well, like, it's a fourth wall break, but the fourth wall is not our fourth wall. It's, like, the the wired in this universe. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Which is still so cute. Again, the first two episodes make it seem like this physical place. You know, they talk about, like, a community. Mm-hmm. Well, on these two episodes, it's, how, it, it's like this place that kind of exists. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's much more abstract in these two episodes. Because oh, yeah. they're dealing with uh, other things. They kind of put that aside yeah. for now. It reminds me a lot of Paprika. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Indeed. But it's it's also very different in, a way, oh, yeah. in many ways. Yeah, like, Paprika really makes it clear how the science fiction works. Mm-hmm. But this, it's sort of, like drizzles you information to figure it out on your own <laughs> yeah yeah oh i was i just had something i wanted to say oh the words didn't come up like the color the the watercolor background oh, with yeah. the vertical words oh yeah they that just stopped. stopped becoming a thing that stopped That's yeah huh. it seems like that was oh but no it seemed like though whenever that happened in the first two episodes it was like a summary of the ideas that are being presented. Mm-hmm. It's like condensation of certain ideas. I don't remember something like... I took it as like communication from the wired or something. Yeah, that's what I thought. But maybe because Lane is more willing to go into the wire at this point. Or maybe, you know, she is starting to exhibit physical changes. Yeah. Which is very interesting. I love how unsubtle they are about it. Just like... <laughs> Yeah. Like, like the message is so clear that when you're on the internet or when, yeah, or the Navi or on your computer, it's easy to turn into somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's definitely uh, a topic much debated in media as well as, you know, something that I can actually sympathize with to well, an extent. Oh, especially nowadays with, I mean... Like, here it was more speculation of Mm -hmm. where we're headed. Yeah. Now it's, like, a reality that we all live. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the the stalker dudes with the red beam are all about. Mm -hmm. Are they from The Wired? Are they... They seem to be, like, some sort of police, you know, they're they're there to set things right. Or they could be villains. I'm not sure. Yeah, their, their motives aren't really clear yet. Yeah. They just kind of show up. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's talk about the little girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when she first appeared, the beginning of the religion episode, was it the beginning? Yes. Um, I thought she was like young Lane. The, my first, immediately was like, oh, that's Lane when she's young and she somehow got her memory wiped and that's how her dad knows. Like I just <laughs> immediately formed that theory in like one second. But then the little girl appears like right after present day lane leaves the scene i mean the theory could still hold true but who's that little girl and why does she look like an old woman at times hmm, yeah there's actually this horror movie i'm just gonna throw this nugget i'm not gonna name the movie because that's a bit of a spoiler i'm already saying the spoiler there's a horror movie where um the whole point of the movie is to find a little girl in red and that at the very end there's this reveal That actually reminded me of the little girl in this one, how she like kind of had uh, features of older people. It's a 70s film. It reminded me of that. So if any of you know what I'm talking about, it's a very good movie. I really like that movie. Uh, This first letter starts with a D. K. (laughs) Yeah, sure, okay. (laughs) Um, Yeah, the girl's interesting. Lane. Lane gets... Okay, so who does Lane communicate with? Um, Lane gets messages from the girl who committed suicide, always telling her to go in. Why haven't you, why haven't you come into, yeah, it, it yet. And then, um, 
there's the DJ dude in Siberia mm-hmm. who seems to have always been... We never yeah, see she's them... getting information. The first time she got information, she physically went there. Exactly. The second time, she did it through the Wired. Yeah. Yeah. Which is... I love how that's portrayed. I just mm-hmm. love that so much. <laughs> It's like this thing that exists, but it's also invisible, which is exactly what the internet is. But like now living in present day, we have a very concrete idea of what the internet is. Mm-hmm. But the way it's done here, it leaves just enough mystery. Yeah. Ugh, I, 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 I'm so like, oh yeah, this is a big point I was going to bring up. Like this show does episodes in a very interesting way mm-hmm. because you know, the last anime I saw was Lesbian Bear Storm. <laughs> and that one very much had like, a, oh, next time. Oh, this episode is this episode. And with this show, episodes are still episodes in that they explore certain ideas, clearly. Like the Psyche episode was very much about the Psyche and what it is. And even though that's never answered, mm-hmm. you know, it's an episode that explores that. But in terms of just how an episode is structured, you with most shows, you get a general idea of how each episode is structured from like the first few episodes with this you don't know when it's going to end mm-hmm. yeah. It, yeah like in the third episode it just throws an imagery at you at the very last second <laughs> yeah and then in some of the other ones it just kind of leaves one shot that lingers on for a bit before the to be continued yeah it, it never keeps at the same point yeah. so it's always and unpredictable i think this is a great first show because again, I'm not. My brain isn't wired. <laughs> for, as wired about like TV shows. Like everyone, you know, can watch TV shows. I feel like if I really were to finish a show at this point, I have to binge watch it, and I don't find it that really pleasant unless it's Rick and Morty. But Rick and Morty is just well, Rick and Morty you own. can't really binge watch because it's so dense. But everyone does it. Like like, it's like people eating, do it, which is like, ridiculous. Every episode is its whole burger of like mm-hmm. a full size meal. If you binge watch that, you're just gonna like. For me, you fill up and then you're. Yeah, you something don't about Rick and Morty <laughs> just didn't make me. F- there was no chore ever, not ever. Okay, f- after the first episode, I was like, the pilot kind of stinks. I mean, in comparison with the rest of the show. Yeah, but even by itself, the pilot's really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then by the second episode, I immediately caught onto the charm of it and mm-hmm. just went on watching it. But I feel like. See, with Lesbian Bear Storm, uh, Yuri Kuma Arashi, uh, I basically watched it in two sittings, one at MAGFest and one with Ethan. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think I would have been able to finish it if I didn't binge watch it, mm-hmm. just because each episode is so structured. Yeah. And, and it, by the end of each episode, you get a sense of finality where it doesn't immediately prompt you to watch the next one. Mm-hmm. That's what I something I had with the first, only two episodes of Breaking Bad I've seen. Hmm. And that's p- partially because the pilot, you know, that was the episode that the TV company, the studio got in order to see if the show was worth running. So the pilot itself, it's its own little film. But even the second episode felt like its own little film. So I just lost momentum. Yeah, it's like it's designed to be, you know, aired on television, right? Right. So they're putting them in installments. And it's designed to be, you watch it, and then you wait a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then you see the next one. So, like, it is supposed to, you finish watching it, and either, like, you have a feeling of finality so that you can go do something else mm-hmm. then, or it does that, and Breaking Bad was really good with this, actually. It would end the episode, but give you a reason to want to watch the ap- next mm. episode, even though it has that finality. Okay. Yeah. I um, imagine... That, that was my experience. I imagine that... Yeah. that the deeper you go into the characters, because it seems like character pieces the entire way, mm-hmm. Breaking Bad. Yeah. I feel like by... Because I hear season three is when it really gets good. And For like, me, it was good from the from the get-go. Really? Like, yeah. Okay. Like I've from, heard there like are episodes, some episodes. Even episode three had me totally, totally hooked. Really? Yeah. I mean, the first yeah. two episodes... I was unhealthily told. hooked on Breaking Bad when I was watching I would it. not yeah. expect yeah. that. Yeah. Because it's very much the genre that I wouldn't expect you to like. Yeah, I, I was just really mm. impressed by the quality of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's very good writing, even very good like cinematography and act- and acting and across the board, it's hands down one of the you know crowning achievements of television. That's what I've heard. That's what yeah. I've heard. I'll get to it someday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but then you get to shows like Walking Dead, which I haven't seen, but I hear the 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 
the whole concept of that show is they leave you with a massive cliffhanger at the end of every episode. <laughs> yeah. Like the mat, you know, like where it forces you to want to watch it, mm-hmm. only to leave you with another cliffhanger. Yeah, with Breaking Bad, it like it sometimes gives you a really heavy cliffhanger, but it's by cutting it off at a moment in the action where it just got really intense. Yeah. It's not like, oh, and how is he gonna? It, it's mo- It's not like. Oh, and the killer is, and we'll find out next week. It's no, really I feel like, like Walking that. Dead does something yeah. similar, though. Yeah, in, it's in not that. Bad. It's okay. more like they're trapped, and then something happens that changes everything, uh-huh. and then they end the episode. Oh, and stuff like okay. that, right? Okay, yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. makes it where, like, oh, wow, what's going to happen next is, the, is, is what you're wondering. It's not, and the answer is, and then they don't give it to you. Right. Yeah. Although, the, that is sometimes the effect, because, like, they cut it off right where you want to know more information. Uh huh. So, I I, yeah. I don't think they use it all the time. Probably not. Not not really. Right. Yeah. But basically, all of this detour. The point I'm I'm getting at is that Lane is probably like the best show possible for me to just watch <laughs> in segments, mm-hmm. just because it doesn't feel like that. Yeah. It feels like. It it's yeah it it's just how do I say it. It doesn't trick you into wanting to watch the next one. Right. Like a lot of shows kind of do. Mm-hmm. Like it It more pulls you in just because it's interesting. It, it feels like it's yeah. confident in itself enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's confident enough to not have to like put a big cliffhanger at the end. Right. Yeah. And there's never like a preview of the next episode or a recap of the previous episode. Yeah. They just kind of throw you in the world. And I love that. That's 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 so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. This is probably. This will probably be one of my favorite animes for oh. a long time. Awesome. Unless, the ending just totally either, I don't know, turns conventional, or. Nah. I doubt it. Nah. There's no way it's, it's just gonna direction. suddenly be like, oh it's no, it's suddenly gonna turn to a heist movie where the kid. <laughs> Where the kids needs needs to steal steal the psyche, and there's an episode that's all pre planning that heist. We no. need guns. Lots, Lots of, of guns. guns. Oh gosh, that's my yeah. My, I don't think too highly of the Matrix. I mean, it's fun. Uh. No, I actually really like the Matrix. I, I like know, the first. Know, I like the first one. I like the second one more than the first one. Oh, which yeah. is an absolute like you can't say that, <laughs> but. That's that. <laughs> oh man, there's there's a couple more. Th- I feel like there's more things. What else? There was one moment I can't remember clearly, where like, did Lane have an internal monologue with herself? There was I don't know. There were a couple moments that just there were so many moments that just threw me completely off guard, that I feel like. I it can't, you know, that's for the rewatch to. To, to decipher like like you need to rewatch it to really pick up all the details so yeah i think that's that's it do you want to say anything else no i think we're good okay we're good all right till next lane till next lane <laughs>